This type of fly is my favourite fly. It's a parachute, brown, irresistible, and I use it for boat, dun and spinner. The red and brown spinner. And this is the body material. Common Rhode Island red feathers, neck feathers for tar whisks. Two slightly different coloured hackles for the hackle. There is no wing and the loop is formed out of some ordinary ladies embroidery. So, so to make the loop, and we'll do that first, I'm going to cut off a piece of embroidery silk about three inches long. Now we don't need to use all of these. There are I think six different fibres in here so we only need one strand. So it's one strand out of a strand of embroidery silk and that makes the wonderful loop for a Duncan loop fly. And the hook is size 14 or size 16 Eagle Claw LO57S Nympha hook. So we lock that in there and we do a test. Hear the little ting ting. Every fly has got to have a a sealed glue base. So important to do this. Eight. Yep. I always tie anti-clockwise as, as I've <coughs> said before. And the reason I tie anti-clockwise I think is because I haven't got a thumb and I have to use that whip finisher. Now, if you use a conventional one of those other whip finishers that you wind with the then you can t tie right handed or, or clockwise. But if you try to wrap with this whip finisher clockwise, the bloody silk always comes off it. So I adapted and I didn't realise I was adapted to prevent that from happening. Ordinary common old local Tasmanian Rhode Island red, tar whisks only, anything from five to ten fibres will suffice. Don't use the rule of the tail fibres being the same length as the hook shape, as the body. Make them a good, a good half as long again, so that you've got a good long tail sitting out there. If you have a look at the, a spinner, they've got long tails, haven't they? Tie those in on top of the hook. Now we have to make a body. And I do this not by spinning the deer hair, but by putting it on in little rosettes. So we pick off about a match thickness of deer hair. Keep the ends nice and even if you can here. If they're too uneven, don't be frightened of trimming that bit off. Make them nice and even there. Now, really, really close to the end, hold them on top of the hook shank and run the thread round trapping all the fibres. And cut that off. Do a couple more wraps there. Force that thread to the rear, back to the back of the hook, with that uh, bundle, and put another bundle in front. Pull it over with your fingers and cut it off on this side of the hook.
fill in the gap with another little bundle. Bring the thread forward to the front of the clump, cut that off, push that back, stack it back to the back of the hook. Repeat the process till you fill the whole body form in which is two thirds the length of the hook shank. So we gradually pull build the body up with these little rosettes of deer hair. Did you come up with that technique, Graydon? Well... I've never seen anyone do no, that. I've never seen that either. Uh, I never used to have a lot of money. And when I bought a clump of deer hair and you do it the conventional way where you spin the whole thing around there and you go and clip it off, Every time you put a clump on to build a fly like this, you use half that bloody deer hair up. Right. And you make one fly. And I had to come up with an idea of trying, so I come in putting little rosettes in. And whether I, it, it, but it came out of in here somewhere, but it may have been uh, instigated by other methods. It's a combination of other methods made a bit easier. Uh, the spinning deer hair, of course, and then there's this method of putting the rosettes in. And this, this method means that your deer hair goes a long, long way further. So we've got a body now built up, which is well over two thirds the length. It's more like three quarters, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this back a bit really consolidate it along the hook shank and make it the two thirds. Now, without cutting my tail fibres off, I'm going to trim the body down. So what you do first of all is put your fingernail up against the back of the hook shank on top of your tail filaments and cut it off flat along the top like that. Turn your and cut it off flat along that side back to your fingernail and the same on the near side then turn your hook right upside down and cut it off under the belly now what we've got here what we've got here is a four sided or a square length of deer hair on the hook shank, haven't we? So we've got to get run along those and make it just take those little edges off. And the finer that you can trim your body down, the better it's going to be. There is a good rule of thumb to use. If you have a look at the at the uh, body and where you've cut it off, if there's a shiny bit there, just trim that and take that shininess out of it. You'll see little shiny bits there, and that means that you're looking at the side of the piece of deer hair rather than at the end of it. So what we try to get is all the ends all looking out there, and then the body looks nice and even. Now we tie in the loop and all we do is tie in one leg of the loop like so hopefully like so and then bring it around and tie the, the other loop leg in on the other plane. So we've got a loop like this. Now we need a couple of hackle feathers. The general rule for hackle length is that the hackle needs to be the same length as the distance between the eye and the point of the hook. But when you're tying this fly you want to go two sizes bigger. So, don't be frightened of selecting a nice 
long fibred feather to tie it out. Now I've picked a, a light red and hopefully a little bit darker red one here. Have a look at the fella and leave some of this flu feather in here. See this flu in here? You want to tie some of that into your fly because it makes the body a little bit, the hackle a little bit bulkier. So we're going to peel those fibres forward and then get your scissors and just trim that off here like so rather than strip it because every time you strip if you see the difference between where I've trimmed and where I've stripped I've halved the size of the stem haven't I and if you strip both sides off then you've really made your stem really weak and so what I've managed to do is I've left some flu on here where I'm going to tie it in and I'll get rid of that bit of stem So it's got to be curved side up. See that with the curve in your feathers ears like this? I'm going to tie it in on that plane. <coughs> Just in front of the build up body. And then I'm going to get this other feather that I got earlier. And all I'm doing is trimming it in so I can trim it off and I've just trimmed a little bit of the five barbels off where I can tie it in now. You can see where I'm just going to tie that end in there. And I've tied two hackle feathers in with shiny side up, side by side in front of the loop. Now I put the thorax on and then I wind the hackles up the loop. <laughs> They're not in the way right now, I can hold them back here out of the way. Now all we do is a little rosette fair on top and pull it over. So it's, as you're tightening the thread off, you're pulling the deer hair over and tightening it at the same time. And then trim it, but when you trim it, cut it off exactly the same length as the body. as that already formed body and then put another little rosette on the opposite side of the hook. And trim off identically but don't cut your fibres, your, your hackle fibres. Now you've got a bit of deer hair left. Should we throw that away or should we keep it for the next fly so you get a pair of and you keep that and tie the next fly with that one. Clever. Instead of wasting that bit of deer hair. Thanks mate. Really trim your hackle up nice and neat so it's the same length as your thorax. Uh, your body rather, your thorax is the same length as the body. More so on the sides than the bottom doesn't matter too much about the top because we're going to bring the <coughs> loop over there now we can go back to where I was put your finger through the loop trap it is that nice and visible on your mm -hmm. yep. screen take the two feathers both <coughs> at the same time wind them up the loop the same distance as what it is on the thorax so you only want to come up the loop as far as what the thorax is long then go back down through those again 
about three turns up and three turns down. Around about three. Doesn't matter really. No. To about, then pull this loop right back out of the way. Bring the feathers forward and under the eye. Bring the thread up and I trap the. Is that clear on you? Mm -hmm. Always do about five turns. Don't worry, don't, whatever you do, don't do two, because that's only got to slip off the eye once, and you've done, undone the fly, you've got to start all over again. So make sure you do five turns to trap it. Get your scissors. Damn. And trim off all this hackle. Get rid of that. Now if we have a look here, I hope I can show you. If there's any fibres out here sticking out over the eye, cut them off. Out of the way. Now when I lift this up, where I brought the hackles forward around this side, there's a layer of barbels that's come round with it and I have to trim those. Otherwise I'm going to have more barbels on one side of the hackle than what I have on the other. So those ones that I brought across the front here, I'm just going to cut those off. Just a little few there. And this is the fly that Bobby French spent 12 years, uh, 12 months trying to get off of Rudy because <laughs> I tied for Talbots for a spinner. Now that hackle, uh, the two legs of the loop are then brought forward to the eye, trapped with the silk, and I've made this a bit long, it's not as good as it could be, and that wasn't supposed to break either, that, that embroidered silk must be as rotten as hell usually can't break silk like that. Five whips. And three whips. And this is the lock nut. <coughs> Trim off. Got a little beautiful little paintbrush. You can use it for cleaning the glue out of your eye. So save all those just for cleaning the eyes with.